so let's begin remember in the previous chapters you know one of them we had learned that for a particle to move in a circle it should have a normal acceleration equal to v square by r towards the center of the circle we had learned that and even derived this expression in one of the previous chapters since now we have learnt about the concept of force we can basically say that every particle of mass m that moves in a circle requires a force mv square by r acting towards the center of the circle understood so this is an important fact that you must remember if a particle is undergoing circular motion then definitely a force mv square by r must be acting towards the center of the circle understood so this is a very important fact you must remember we had also learnt in the previous chapters that you know v equal to omega r omega is the angular velocity of the body revolving in a circle and v is the tangential velocity of the body at any instant since v is omega r we can also say that this important force that is required to make the particle move in a circle which acts normal to the direction of motion of the particle is also m omega square r so force mv square by r or m omega square r must act towards the center of the circle perpendicular to the direction of motion of the particle at every instant understood this force is called the centripetal force if a body moves in a circle then there must be some centripetal force acting on that body understood note that this centripetal force is not an extra force it represents the normal component of the forces that already act on the body so if this particle of mass m moves in a circle one extra force mv square by r does not need to act on this particle the forces that are already acting on this particle in the normal direction you know in the direction normal to the motion of the particle they comprise the centripetal force we add up the normal components of the forces that are already acting on the body and we call them the centripetal force understood for example take a look at this particle you know which is tied to a thread and which is rotating in a circle so basically i have taken a thread and i have attached the thread to a particle and the particle is rotating in a circle now no extra centripetal force is acting on this body the tension in the thread as you can see is normal to the direction of motion of the particle at every instant isn't it there is no doubt about it tension is normal to the direction of motion of the particle so tension provides the centripetal force understood similarly there is a component of the weight of the particle that is normal to its direction of motion isn't it after all weight acts downwards so if the particle makes an angle theta with the vertical at any instant then mg cos theta is the component of the weight that acts perpendicular to the particle's direction of motion so mg cos theta and tension add up and they provide a perpendicular force to the particle towards the center of the circle understood so you can say that t plus mg cos theta is mv square by r the net value of the centripetal force acting on the body is mv square by r normal to the direction of motion understood this force can be provided by all the other forces that are acting on the body so here tension force and a certain component of the gravitational force provide this force mv square by r there you go let's solve a problem to clarify this concept in an even better way this one was asked in iit j 1986 a simple pendulum of length l and mass m is oscillating in a plane about a vertical line between angular limits phi minus phi and plus phi for an angular displacement theta where the modulus of theta is less than phi the tension in the string and the velocity of the bob are t and v respectively the following relations hold good under the above conditions and then some relations are given let us try to understand exactly what is happening in the question in the question it is given that there is this pendulum and the pendulum bob of mass m is attached to the string of the pendulum the pendulum is moving between the angles minus phi and plus phi understood now we observe this pendulum at an angle theta with the vertical you know at the instant when the pendulum makes an angle theta with the vertical now at this instant many points are given point a point b point c and point d and we are asked which of these points is correct first let us understand what forces are acting on the pendulum when it makes an angle theta with the vertical of course the tension force t 
acts perpendicular to the direction of motion of the pendulum isn't it the pendulum is moving along a circular path and along the radius the tension force is acting parallel to the direction of motion of the pendulum mg sin theta is acting isn't it the component of mg parallel to the direction of motion of the pendulum perpendicular to the direction of motion of the pendulum mg cos theta is acting in the downward direction but perpendicular to the direction of motion of the pendulum isn't it these are the relations given in the question a b c and d we have to say which of these is correct the first relationship given is t cos theta equal to mg mg is the net downward gravitational force acting on mass m t cos theta is the net vertical component of the tension force acting on mass m so the net vertical force acting on mass m is t cos theta minus mg isn't it but t cos theta is not equal to mg this is because if t cos theta was mg in that case the pendulum bob would be at rest in the vertical direction isn't it it would have no tendency to move along the vertical direction however we see that the pendulum comes down isn't it it comes down like if you release this pendulum at this angle theta what will happen it will come down isn't it it will cross this midpoint here and then it will move up again so basically the pendulum will move along the vertical direction isn't it